Welcome, everyone. We have Rodney, Andrew, Vitali, Jan, Igor, and Brian, and myself, Michael. Uh, I have a small piece of news. Yesterday, Antonig and I organized a FreeBSD jail call to match the pattern of the Beehive calls, and it went a mere three hours and had about seven people in attendance. You can find the seven minutes, seven pages of minutes in the link that I will drop in the chat right now. And uh, Igor, you joined that. If you want to do an introduction here, I totally welcome you to do a brief introduction. Uh, and I'd love to hear your feedback on that meeting. Oh, uh, sure. <clears throat> so my name is Igor. Uh, I'm a FreeBSD enthusiast, mostly uh, a Linux nerd and uh, sysadmin, DevOps, SRE at daytime. Um, I'm here to listen and Beehive is just something I am curious about. I don't have any production experience. Uh, so just here to listen and observe. Uh, the call for yesterday about jails went fantastic in my opinion. Uh, it, it, it feels like it was a lot of people who needed a company uh to uh in friendly ears to talk about all things jails and FreeBSD related and that's why it went for three hours <laughs> i i hope we will manage to keep it shorter next time uh because uh, finding three hours during my work day is a little bit difficult uh but yeah uh it was amazing thanks michael hey you're welcome and i'm putting on screen the list of takeaways that we ended up with after a mere three hours. So uh, some of them were just little documentation bits. People shared really helpful like uh, commands and flags that others hadn't heard of. But Dave really pushed for the notion of a proper state machine such that you can follow the uh, life cycle of a jail. And if it is suspended on startup in any way, you could determine where it exactly is and what needs to be done as opposed to like kill everything or reboot the host or otherwise. So you are welcome to take a look at that doc. I will drop it in the chat. And for those not familiar with the layout of this, you're welcome to follow along either on the doc and fix things as appropriate or just uh, read along with the share. So uh, welcome, Hans. Uh, Vitaly, I would love to hear if you have news on the, re uh, the reviews you have posted. Uh, there is some progress. Uh, previously mentioned uh, months ago, reviews uh, uh, was uh, committed, and uh, currently, I uh, uh, sorry. Uh, currently, I opened a uh, review for. Enabling Capsicum in uh, Beehive uh, if uh, Beehive snapshot is uh, enabled. And uh, there are two uh, uh, rest of uh, patches, some part of patches was committed and the uh, uh, rest not committed uh, to patches, uh, to reviews uh, currently is. Uh, uh performing and uh the most uh next step most important is uh um, review related to uh, supporting multiple devices it's uh currently be, be, uh, snapshot resume um, doesn't uh have that uh, um, ability and uh, it uh, has bug uh, because if uh, specify and run the hive with the two similar devices, for example, block if devices, virtual uh, um, uh, car devices, or uh, two CD ROM devices, it uh, silently uh, suspend uh, process, but uh, during restore, it uh, had unpredictable behavior. And uh, my review tries to solve that. Uh, currently, we are discussing it. And uh, after this work is committed, 
I am going to uh, open uh, work and reviews related to uh, using uh, one uh, file for snapshot uh, and uh, and released uh, work. So, so um, uh, it, it, it can be easily debugged and uh, printed uh, values. It's under the versioning as, uh, as well as all uh, that uh, describe it in uh, 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 John Bullen uh, commit in 2020 uh, related to snapshot resume code. So it's uh, he described it. Uh, uh, is an event, uh, problems uh, with the current snapshot code. And uh, one of problem is uh, uh, lack of versioning, lack of uh, uh, changing, uh, uh, updating. Uh, any change uh, can in uh, code can break uh, snapshot uh, and resume. And uh, also that we have currently three files per snapshot, and it should be one. Thank you. Uh, yes, and you mentioned capsicum if something is enabled. Was that for, say, restore enabled? Uh, currently, it uh, is in review. Uh, and uh, uh, if uh, capsicum is disabled, if uh, we have snapshot, Ah, is used. Okay. Got it. Uh, Do you have a link to that review? Enabled. Sorry? Do you have a link to that review? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Great. Yes, Post yes. that if you can. Uh, okay. But it sounds like you're making progress, correct? Broadly. And I thank you for that. Uh, Corvin, do you have anything to report and any feedback for Vitali? I know you've looked at some of his reviews. Yeah, I've looked at some of his uh, reviews, but um, Rob has some issues with um, yeah, some of Vitali's uh, reviews, but it looks like they got an agreement so that we now can merge Vitali's uh, reviews. That is great news. And thank you for and, those links. Go ahead. Yeah, and from my side, um, Mark Johnston accepted some uh, of my female config patches today. So um, yeah, now we have enough. So um, I will, when I will merge these patches, um, we will have female config support on Beehive. Uh, is there are there more steps to that, or that was the the big one? No, no. Ev so everything is accepted, but not merged yet. So oh, I oh, got just it, got have it, to yeah. take the time to merge it. That is fantastic. Uh, to spice things up, Hans, do you have any news from the Lumos side? Uh, no. <laughs> Understood. How are things going? Well, I'm pretty busy. Probably will be well into April, and if something comes up, we can start then. Understood. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brian, I owe you some info of uh, OpenBSD on UEFI. Do you have any news or questions for the group? Was that just addressed to me? I'm sorry. It was, yes. Just, just checking in with you. Yeah, I don't have any questions at the moment. Um, I'm, uh, my memory finally arrived, so I'm going to be building All right. in a couple of days. Yes, you were building a, a what short depth one U super micro, perhaps the on D ish system for your yep. lab, correct? Great. That's, that's that. 
Appreciate that alone it. is exciting. Yes, it is. Rodney, do you have anything to share? Or Rodney's phone, do you have anything to share? No. Understood. Let's see. Um, taking a quick look at the jail to do, we lost Jan, who I know had some input. Uh, uh, with no surprise, there was a very brief discussion of like, oh, we went through the standard tools, like used Easy Jail, used IO Cage, and are disappointed that they are stagnant. And then it very quickly got into discussions of, say, uh, gosh, state machines. And I will, for those who arrived late, I'll post this in the chat once again. Ignore it if it's not your thing. Uh, there were some flags such as, I think, like VH, not for JLS, not to be confused with uh, HV, that gives you formatted information on a running jail. That was one of those pleasant surprises. There was quite a bit of discussion about uh, nested jails and feel free to peruse that. And the part of the reason for that call is obviously obviously to keep uh, jail topics off of this call. Anyway, uh, who has, uh, Andrew H, anything new to report? It sounds like you got past the, your little personal blocker at work. That was great, congratulations. Not really. Understood. Then that said, please, anyone, any topics to discuss? I'm happy to give a quick Occam BSD report if you like, but that's uh, somewhat orthogonal to Beehive. I could even give a little demo of it, I suppose, but. Um, I have a quick yes, sir. Very question. Um, where can I find good documentation about how do I set up a Linux VM, specifically Alpine Linux, which boots from UEFI loader, not from the uh, modified Beehive Grub. Uh, reading the uh, docs in, the, in, the, uh, in our handbook only gives pointers to the uh, Grub Beehive loader, which doesn't work for me for, for reasons. So the general consensus is to use the UEFI firmware, and I'm surprised that's not mentioned. I'm not entirely surprised, I'm but I didn't look carefully enough. Are you by chance running VM Beehive, which is by general consensus the the shortest path to getting things working? And I suspect uh, it has yes, some amount. I, I, I tried it, and that set me up with Grub to Beehive. No that, kidding. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Um, does anyone else Sorry. have an answer on that? Go ahead. Sir, Igor, did you uh, say Linux VM or Al Alpha VM? Well, Linux, Alpine is a Linux VM. <laughs> is a Linux distribution. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I don't know if there's an official um, documentation, but it should be very straightforward. So um, yeah, just use the UEFI ROM, attach your um, CD ROM um, for yeah for for the installation and a disk, and it should work. So maybe just search for a um, tutorial for any OS. So it should be similar if you're using Windows or FreeBSD or Linux with UEFI booting and then just use your installation file instead of the file mentioned in the tutorial. Although I did a quick search and found the template and they indeed lead with loader grub. That's interesting. But that's from 2018. Maybe it's simply not been updated. Hmm. And the uh, firmware you mentioned, is it something that can be installed from packages or ports, or is it something that needs to be found somewhere else? There is package of the uh, UFI. Uh, you could just install Beehive. My, 
Yes, fever. Oh, my. Right. So there is a meta package that grabs a few different ROM images. I believe it, like Corbin said, it's beehive dash firmware. Okay, thanks. Uh, Igor, uh, you can write me and uh, uh, we'll uh, try to run your uh, Alpha NVM and uh, can share command line. So uh, mostly, uh, Problem with Beehive is, uh, and Camu is uh, uh, write down the proper uh, command line uh, with arguments. Okay. Uh, I will send you an email oh, probably later tonight. Okay. Uh, Igor, is there anything you can share about your use case just to enlighten the group? Um, so I'm working uh, on, uh, at, at my day job, I am using Linux. Well, I need to use Linux for things like Docker and Kubernetes, stuff like that. So, um, so I have a separate Linux laptop, but using that is inconvenient. So I, was, I like, I need, I want to run uh, Linux in a VM so I can you know, have it all in, on one machine and use things like Docker on like inside of Beehive. May I ask what OS you're running Docker under? Uh, as I said, Alpine Linux. Okay, so those are one and the same. Got yeah. it. Got it. Other topics and ideas and concerns and wild ideas and proposals. Sorry, I'm catching up. I had a phone call come in. <clears throat> no worries at all. We discussed equals issues of Alpine and Grub. Go ahead, Rod. I did have a status update. I did make a, another step forward on the let's run Proxmox and um, FreeBSD from the same ZFS pool and that I have now dissected the how Proxmox installs and found their Perl installer script so I can I've figured out how I can I can install Proxmox to an arbitrary Z pool instead of the um, factory hard coded pool named R pool. So I've gotten past that bit. They've just literally hard coded R P O O L into their scripts and a couple of other places, their bootloader and some other stuff that makes that assumption. So I've identified those locations so that. I'm ready to move forward with attempting to boot Proxmox from a pool not named our pool. That said, have you seen the link that I posted, which is about installing Proxmox on top of a stock Debian distribution? That might be helpful I've, in yeah. untangling no, what I've, they've done. No, actually, no, actually, that makes it worse because... Does it? Good to know. Um, the, the stock Debian distributions cannot... They they do the other Linux mechanism and they create a completely separate B pool for booting from and then a R pool for running from and they just greatly complicate the whole thing. Uh, they don't have... Yeah. So Proxmox is solution is much cleaner. Prox, Proxmox actually has a piece of code that runs in EFI that can, um, let me think about this. They still, they load their kernel from the EFI partition, which is fine because it, that's completely out of the way of anything going on in the ZFS pools. But the, the biggest thing is, is they can jump directly to the running pool. Does their kernel so, live in the EFI partition? Yes. 
Ah, interesting. They create, okay. they, they create a kernel and an init um, an RD or whatever. Yeah, an init RD file that gets stuck into the EFI partition that their bootloader then loads. But that's all that comes from the EFI partition. After that point, it's all ZFS. Nice. And it's that little piece of, that's another little piece that I got to muck with to change it from our pool to an arbitrary pool name. Oh, is that built into the kernel, compiled into the kernel or something? No, it's not compiled into the kernel. It's um, passed from their bootloader to the kernel as a argument. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> it's the, the root path includes the pool name. So it's, um, I haven't looked at their, I don't have the source code. I haven't found the source code yet to their blob that lives in EFI. But I got a feeling our pool is just hard coded into the binary. It may not be. It may be in a text file that I can easily change. Uh, that said, um, can you simply rename your your FreeBSD pool our pool? <laughs> oh, you could do that. Yes, I mean the expedient way to to, to move the experiment, but that's not that. That problem has to be solved anyway, and I would rather just solve that problem up front because I don't like to have a whole bunch of things called our pool floating around. Yeah, correct. I have no, I have no two pools named anywhere the same, and I'm not about to go down that road. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, just a, yeah, a status, uh, just a status update. I have made a, a small incremental progress in that that I've now found their installer and it's just written in Perl and it's actually pretty easy to tweak it to install wherever I want. Very nice. Uh, Igor, you dropped in a comment about the Linux kernel being able to run be run as an EFI stub. Uh, how would you define EFI stub for we so, slow people? This may or may not be relevant to what Rod just said, but uh, I had personally had success with just running kernel Linux kernel without any bootloaders whatsoever, because you can uh, compile Linux kernel to be runnable from UEFI partition, and then you configure it just using EFI vars. Uh, utility to just uh, uh, pass down some command line variables to the kernel. Um, I have not tried it with DFS, but for other uh, like other use cases and other file systems. Uh, this this could to... this could very well be exactly what Proxmox has done. Like I said, I haven't got to that piece of code yet, but there they have some little piece of EFI it lives in a directory along with the, the kernel in the initrd files. And it's just, it's given by EFI vars as a bootable object. Yeah, so it, it would be interesting to look what uh, EFI boot manager tool uh, shows in that case. How do they actually start the thing? Michael, it's uh, if EFI boot M MGR. M Got it. M Thank you. Yeah. Like that? Um, let me verify that. Cool. Thank you. That's a free BSD user run tool. Well, it, it is also available on Linux, or at least some some variation of it. I, like, I will double check the name of the utility. Yeah, it's a different name. Rod, that's great news. Um, yeah, do keep us posted. Yeah, do do realize a lot of Linux installations still install Grub to the and load Grub in from in from EFI. That's how they deal with EFI. Is they literally put Grub in in the EFI thing and load that as the loader. MG or MGR, Igor. Um, EFI boot MGR. Okay. It's to be, yep. 
Got it. I'll also name NimJR. Note that many. That is great news. I'll say it again. Well, everyone, uh, we're at about 30 minutes in. Should we just call it good? And for those who want to attend the jail call, it is Wednesdays an hour later, 10 a.m. Pacific. And if you want to be on that invitation list, just let me know. Thank you, Igor, for your assessment of that. And if that's what everyone has, we can uh, talk in a week. Thanks, everyone. Super. Thanks for attending. Bye. I'll hang around a few minutes. Take care. One thing that kind of came to mind with your some of what you said you discussed on that FreeBSD jails call is that on you know on our side in the Lumos, our equivalent would probably be zones, Correct. and uh, since we can run all of that through the zones interface, we do have a unified way for doing a lot of stuff. So if you're being, due to lack of maintenance, being forced to create a new interface, you may look at seeing if you can create a unified interface for all those all the different types of technologies you have. Yes, and zones definitely came up quite a bit in so far as well, all of this is just fine <laughs> there. So. I'll make a note there uh, about the unified interface. Um, Having someone with Solaris and Zones experience in, in jails call would be just awesome. So if we can draw some experience from, from Solaris. So Andrew, I don't know if that time slot works for you, but I do believe I slipped you on the invite list. I can verify that. Okay, I'll... I'll uh... See if I can. I don't know if I'll be able to, though. Understood. But yes, it's absolutely open to folks with zones experienced. And of course, I'm not as good as experienced as some of the actual real dev guys. I guarantee you have invaluable insights. Go ahead, Igor. Uh, sorry, at least the idea is how uh, things are structured, how uh, utilities work in, in Solaris or Illumos, how the user interface looks like is, may already be a great, uh, you know, great help for us to shape our tooling. Okay, I'll, like I said, I'll see if I can. I don't know if I'll be able to. Understood. But on that note, I think I need to drop off and Likewise. back to work. Understood. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a fantastic remainder of the week. Have a good one.